Joining me now, Democratic Congressman Tom Suozzi from the great state, the great city of New York. Thanks so much for joining tonight. Hey, Jim, thanks for having me on. So here we are again. We've had this package of aid, not just for Israel, but for Ukraine and Taiwan. It's been passed by the Senate. House has had an opportunity to consider it, vote on it for, for weeks and months now. And, and we're hearing the House Speaker considering again, but maybe he just brings up Israel aid by itself, considering this attack. I wonder if that were to happen. You're a strong supporter of the whole supplemental. If, if, if House Republicans come forward with just aid for Israel and say, we'll deal with Ukraine later, what do you do? That would be terribly unwise. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had the Japanese prime minister speak to the whole Congress last week, and you wouldn't believe the overwhelming support from all of Congress when he talked about how the United States is an indispensable nation on the global stage and supporting Ukraine uh, and other allies. We need to get these things done. It had overwhelming support in the Senate. It has overwhelming support in the House from Democrats and Republicans. And we have to stop letting the chaos caucus of Marjorie Taylor Greene and the others dictate uh, what's going on in the United States Congress and really parroting uh, a lot of what uh, Vladimir Putin is saying. You are on the record saying that if the speaker were to get this attack from the right flank, a motion to vacate, if he were to bring a package that includes Ukraine aid to the floor and Israel aid, we should note, uh, that you would, you would vote for him and encourage other Democrats to vote for him to keep his speakership. And you wrote about this uh, in the Wall Street Journal. I'm going to quote from your, your article. You say, Democrats must offer Speaker Johnson our votes to save democracy in Ukraine and end here. We can't let our bar partisan instincts get in our way. We, we must work with Republicans to disarm Mr. Putin's puppet, get a vote to support Ukraine and defeat Russian disinformation. Our democracy is at stake. I wonder, do, do you have other... Democratic colleagues willing to do the same thing, that, that if Marjorie Taylor Greene, for instance, would give a motion to make a motion to vacate if he were to bring this to the floor, uh, would other Democrats do what you're suggesting? I think that if uh, Speaker Johnson does his job and brings the supplemental package with Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan to the floor, that there will be other Democrats. Uh, Leader Jeffries uh, has said much of the same thing, maybe not as explicitly as I have, but has indicated it has given every indication to me and to others uh, that he wants to get this done because this is important not only for our country but for the world. And we need to stop letting this small group of, of jokers uh, control what's going on in the United States and on the world stage. You are watching the situation very, in Israel very closely, I know, and a lot of people in your district just outside of New York watching it closely as well. You, you've heard the president encourage... Israelis not to go too far, in effect, and, and say quite explicitly that if you attack Iran, the U.S. will not be alongside you as you do so. Is that the right message from the U.S. president to Israeli leaders right now? I mean, the bottom line is the Israel is a sovereign nation. It has to make its own decisions. But we're in a very precarious time, and we need these global coalitions to stick together. You know, it's not just the U.S. It's the West as a whole. Uh, it's the Kingdom of Jordan. I mean, the Kingdom of Jordan yeah. helped last night yeah. to save Israel. Uh, we have to recognize that we want to bring other people into the fold. You know, I think that we'd all like to see Saudi Arabia uh, align with Israel and the U.S. and the West, uh, and we can really make a big change in this region. So, you know, Israel's got to do what a sovereign nation wants to do that they think is in their best interest. But let's recognize you've got a lot of very important partners here that have been helping you uh, to supply you with these defensive weapons. Uh, and there's a big team here. And the one thing that this president has done that he's gotten very little credit for is he's managed to keep a hold a team together in the West uh, when it comes to Israel, when it comes to Ukraine, when it comes to so much more. I mean, just think about when you, Ukraine was first invaded by Russia. I mean, people were worried that Germany and others in the in NATO were worried about their gas uh, and oil uh, imports from Russia. Would they stick together? Mm. He managed to hold everybody together. And we need to hold everybody together here now, not only on uh, Ukraine, but on Israel, on, on uh, the Indo-Pacific, on Taiwan. Let's keep our team together. And to do that, we can't just act uh, unilaterally, I don't think.
As you know, prior to this Iranian attack, uh, th there were a number of Democrats who might vote against uh, the supplemental because of additional aid to Ukraine. Many have been calling for conditions on that military assistance, kind of weapons, how they're used, uh, particularly in Gaza. Do you see that opposition dissipating somewhat in the wake of this Iranian attack, or might that be another obstacle this week? You know, one of the big things that uh, last night's attacks emphasize is that a lot of the aid that the U.S. gives to Israel, most of the aid that the U.S. gives to Israel, is for defensive weapons, uh, to protect mm -hmm. them from at incoming attacks. I mean, that, they're in a tough neighborhood, as we all know, for, for 70 years. Uh, and they're, they're worried right now about attacks, not only from Hamas, the brutal attacks that we saw, but also now we see from Hezbollah, from Lebanon. Now we've got Iran uh, trying to flex its muscles, and we know that Iran is really using Hezbollah and Hamas as their proxies. Uh, so this is a tough neighborhood that needs defensive weapons. We should be highlighting that this is a, a defensive weapons that are being used in many, many instances. And this is packaged with very, very important things that are important to the West, uh, Ukraine. Ukraine is urgent right now. I was just in Ukraine yeah. uh, about a week ago, there for a week. They're, they're getting very anxious because they're running out of, they're running out of defensive weapons, again, yeah. to take down the missiles uh, that uh, Russia is lobbying in. And, and Russia's about to start a new offensive, uh, and we need to stop them. And uh, Ukraine is doing the work. Uh, and uh, we have to support them. We've committed to support them. Uh, we can't, you know, one of the things I highlighted in my Wall Street Journal article, I know I'm going a little off topic here, but the bottom line is we're being corrupted by Russian yeah. disinformation right, from the Chinese Communist Party and from Iran and other uh, uh, strategic adversaries of ours. We can't let that disinformation take us off our game plan, yeah. which is to really save democracy. Listen, you, your Republican colleague, uh, Mike McCall, as you know, I believe you quote him in your article, he, he, he called out some of his fellow Republicans for parroting Russian dis disinformation on the war in Ukraine. I wonder what you would say here to, to your colleagues, uh, s some Republicans who are doing so. What do you say to them? I'm not even going to spend my time talking to them. I'm going to spe speak to the rest of the Republicans. I mean, I hear you know some of my Democratic friends or some of my constituents say, those Republicans. But you know, it's not all the Republicans. Right. It's this small right. group of people that are holding everyone hostage with their crazy talk that happens to be parroting the same messages coming out of Vladimir Putin and his cronies. So we need to recognize what's going on. It wasn't just Mike McCall, who's the chairman of Foreign Affairs. He was also the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, a Republican, that mm -hmm. said the same thing yeah. about the danger of so many Republicans parroting these Russian talk points. So, you know, this is not some crazy tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. I, I, I made a post when I was in uh, 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 leaving Ukraine. I think I was in Moldova at the time. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I never saw the vitriol that I've, I mean, I've had, I've been in politics 30 years. I've been on social media as long as anybody else. I never saw the volume of vitriol coming from what I believe were Russian agents and Russian bots, uh, just corrupting the whole argument. That's happening all over the world. That's happening in Eastern Europe. You talk about this in your writing. Uh, it's happening uh, throughout it's happening throughout the world, and it's happening right here in America. We are, yep. our adversaries are trying to pull us apart as Americans, using our diversity, using our freedom of speech, using our social media, and getting us at each other's throats by using disinformation, because they figured out it's cheaper to get a bunch of people in the basement putting out fake messages mm -hmm. and getting us to hate each other than it is to buy a tank or a missile. We can't let them win. No question. Uh, see it every day. Congressman Tom Swazi. Thanks so much for taking the time tonight. Thanks, Jim. I really appreciate it.